Welcome to The Holistic Entrepreneur with success coach, holistic nurse practitioner, and best-selling author, Bonnie Gressel. Bonnie shares inspirational and enlightening content to educate, empower, and facilitate well-being while nurturing the mind-body-spirit connection. This boost of positive energy will help you manage stress and make the most of your life, allowing you to thrive in the new normal. Now, please welcome the host of The Holistic Entrepreneur, Bonnie Gressel. Well, welcome everyone. And this is your host, Bonnie Gressel, here at The Holistic Entrepreneur. Now, today we're going to talk about limiting beliefs that are affecting you probably today. And most likely these limiting beliefs have come from your childhood. But more on that in just a moment. First, I want to tell you how grateful I am. I am so grateful that you are sharing your valuable time with me. I so appreciate you. If this is your first time listening, welcome. And if you've tuned in before, welcome back. I hope that you find this will be another valuable episode with tips and insights to help you towards your enhanced well-being. Now, I always want to remind you that the information presented here is educational, inspirational, and motivational in nature, but I always want you to just take what fits for you and simply let go of the rest. This show does not intend or imply to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment either. I always want to preface every show with that little reminder for all of us. Now, the other thing that I always want to do when we get together every week is to remind you to take time for you, to just take a moment to remember to breathe. I mean, you have to breathe anyway, but breathe with intention. Notice your breath. Stop for a moment. Just stop and take a nice breath in as that comes all the way down to your belly and then let everything out nice and slow. Just stop. Stop and notice your breath. Just pause for a moment and notice what a beautiful human being you are. You are so loved more than you probably even realize. So every week when we get together, I just want to remind you to stop and notice. Stop and notice your breath and stop and notice you. Now, maybe this is the only moment that you take for yourself. It's so important to your well-being. Really, the more that you can do this, the better. Now, remember to check out the show page, of course, before you leave today. I always have ways for you to connect with me there, and you can find out what's new with Bonnie Gressel at bonniegressel.com. And I would love to hear how 2021 is going for you. Please post a note or send me a private message on my Facebook page at Coach Bonnie Gressel, or you can email me through the website as well. I would love to hear how you're doing. Now, today we're talking about limiting beliefs. So you might be wondering, what are limiting beliefs? Well, there are things that we've maybe heard or experienced in the past that as adults are negatively coloring the way we see the world. Many times this happens when we're kids. So last time we talked about the conscious and and subconscious mind. And that subconscious mind, that huge piece of the iceberg that's under the surface of the water, that's where really most of our limiting beliefs are. We don't intentionally or consciously have limiting beliefs, but they're there. You know, 95% of what you say, do, think, and feel is in that subconscious mind, that huge piece of that iceberg underneath the water. And remember, everything is in there, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And you have this huge pile of stuff in there. We talked about that last time. You want the good stuff at the top of the pile so that those are the beliefs that are guiding your life. Limiting beliefs get in the way and either keep us stuck or limit us in some way. As an example, many of us grew up hearing, you have to work hard to get ahead. So as adults, we wind up imagining that we can't have anything, any abundance or prosperity without working really hard to get it. We also may not feel that we're worthy or deserving of what we want. So many times people, I think women in particular, have a hard time expressing themselves because as a child, somewhere along the line, they heard, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. So they don't say anything at all, even as adults. 
Now, on the other hand, life enhancing beliefs are formed by experiences that make you feel good. Like things that happened when you were a child or younger, when people said that you were doing things right, great job, it gave you confidence, and you felt good about yourself. It helps, it helps us to feel like we can do anything. So limiting beliefs are really formed by experiences that didn't make us feel good. And perhaps we failed at something or we were told we couldn't do it or didn't deserve it. And as adults, many of us carry around a lot more limiting beliefs than life enhancing beliefs. And this can negatively affect our lives. These subconscious beliefs act as filters to our reality. We all see reality different because of each one of us has different beliefs. So three people can hear the same story or see the same event, yet will have three different perceptions of the experience. And that's because they all are a little different at that subconscious level. You know, I would bet that many people have more limiting beliefs at the top of their subconscious stack than the good in life enhancing beliefs. You know, we probably all know people who are positive and happy and we just feel good being around them. These people have more of the good stuff at the top, the life enhancing beliefs. You know, as humans, we tend to develop learned responses, you know, certain habits and ways of thinking. Our brain actually changes to facilitate this and creates pathways in our brain. So take physical pain as an example. Pain cannot be felt without the brain. If you have no brain, you can't really feel pain. Pain begins in the nerve pathways and goes to the brain from the body, wherever that is, and becomes hardwired. So over time, it's kind of woven into the circuitry of our brain. The central nervous system learns to create chronic pain, even though there might not be any apparent physical condition causing that pain. So a good example of this is phantom limb pain. You know, where people feel pain in an area where a limb has been amputated, it's no longer there, but yet they still feel the pain as though it's there. You know, in the past 25 years or so, we've learned a lot more about the brain than we ever knew, but there's still a lot we don't know. The human brain is incredibly adaptive. Something called neuroplasticity is part of this, is a huge part of this. It's the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new nerve cell connections throughout life. You know, I like to say that the brain is pliable. That means we can mold it and shape it like clay or silly putty. This special characteristic allows the brain's estimated 100 billion nerve cells, also called neurons, to constantly create new pathways for neural communication and rearrange existing ones throughout our lives. We never used to think that that was possible before, but it is. You know, without the ability to make such functional changes, our brains wouldn't be able to memorize a new fact or skill. They wouldn't be able to form a new memory, or adjust to a new environment. We just wouldn't be able to recover from brain injury or overcome cognitive abilities, but we can. And this is because of the brain's neuroplasticities. So old dogs, so to speak, can really learn new tricks. Neuroplasticity can work in two directions, and it's responsible for deleting old connections and enabling the creation of new ones. Now, hypnosis happens all the time, happens more than we realize. And we've all been hypnotized many times in our life, but we don't know that we were hypnotized and no one really intentionally meant to do it. But there are really only two things required for hypnosis. One is a focused state of attention and the other is a suggestion. Now we've all experienced this without referring to it as hypnosis. But when you're in a focused state of attention, you're more prone to suggestions and therefore hypnosis. When you view certain people as authority figures like parents or teachers, what they say, or more importantly, what you hear them say, influences us and actually provides that hypnotic suggestion. The good news is that we can undo these limiting beliefs and these pre-hypnotic suggestions. We can learn techniques to change those limiting beliefs so that they don't govern our lives in a negative way. The science of neuroplasticity has a lot to do with this. You know, sometimes when we have certain thoughts or feelings or experiences for a long period of time, we, we, we create what I like to refer to as grooves in our brain, and we get stuck there. 
So take depression as an example. If a person is struggling with despair and sadness, fear, or feeling overwhelmed for a long time, after a while, they sort of create that rut or that groove in their brain. And pretty soon it becomes the only way that they know how to feel. Now, the upside of that, the good news is that we can recreate those pathways. We can create new ones around that current groove. With a practice, you know, it takes practice, but we can create a new groove, so to speak. Neuroplasticity allows us to learn a new way of being. Now, it doesn't happen overnight, but it doesn't have to take years either. In about 30 days or so, we can begin to create new pathways if we really work on it. That means most of the time we want to be focused on that new way of being and how that feels. And the nervous system and brain can be retrained to create a new response and to get out of the painful rut that had been there. Whether it's emotional or physical pain, doesn't matter. You know, we've all probably heard about the power of affirmations to change our limiting beliefs. We're going to talk more about that next time. But I'm sure that there are things that you've probably heard as a child that are maybe still with you today. Maybe they were things you heard about money or relationships or working hard or your health. Your action step this week is to reflect on beliefs that you think may have come from your childhood and that are still affecting you today. You might need to sit with this a bit. And then next time, we'll talk about how to change some of those beliefs if they're no longer serving you. So I hope you found this helpful. And until next time, I wish you health, happiness, and abundance. I want to thank you for joining me at the Holistic Entrepreneur Show today. I know that time is our most precious asset, and so I appreciate you spending your time with me. Now, my purpose is to be of the best service to this community. Whether it's your personal or your work life, I'm here to support you. The best place to get the latest scoop is at bonniegrassel.com. Everything is there. We can connect and you'll find special offers and gifts that I have for you to help you attain the health, happiness, and abundance you deserve. And I encourage you to sign up for my monthly newsletter for more useful information and exclusive offers. The links are on the show page below. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to the Holistic Entrepreneur Show on your favorite podcast directory so that you automatically receive the newest episode when it's released. Until next time, this is Bonnie Gressel wishing you health, happiness, and abundance.